Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, I'm going to give a short legal seminar on employment law. We get, Dieter's Law gets lots of questions about this, and I just want everybody to know that this is going to be a very informative video because these are questions that are asked by lots of people. The first most important question, if you're employed, is whether or not you actually have a written employment contract. If you have a written employment contract, which is rare, when you have employment contracts usually when you get into white collar work, uh, management, those type of things, that contract will be thick, it'll be written for the benefit of the employer, and it will govern your employment. So whatever that contract says is what the terms are that you have to abide by. You breach it, you breach it. Some things that are in those employment contracts to be worried about is always non-compete clauses, which will keep you from competing with your employer if you go someplace else, and confidentiality. But anyway, most people do not have a written contract. Most of you, if you're employed in Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana, and most places in this country, have what's called employment at will. The public policy for that is that employers cannot be hung, hand, hang tied, hamstring, sorry, gobbledygook there. They don't want to be hang tied with, hand tied with being stuck with a contract or not being able to get rid of somebody. So it's employment at will. What does employment at will mean? They can hire you and fire you whenever they want to. It's that simple. Now, there are under federal law some protected classes of workers. Here is who is protected. Women. Ladies make up 50% of the population, yet they're federally protected for discrimination under federal law. Race. Black, blue, green, yellow, you name it. Also, ethnicity. If you're a Native American Indian, you're protected, etc. Sexual preference. If you're gay, you're protected. If you're over 65, you're protected. And what I mean by protected is you cannot be discriminated for those things. So if you can prove that your employer has discriminated against you, even though it's employment at will, because you're gay, because you're black, because you're a woman, and you're over 65. I mean, telling a little joke here, if you're a black gay woman who's over age 65, you got all kinds of angles. Do you know who's not protected under federal law? White men. <laughs> you can't make this up, but it's true. You wonder why white men are a little angry these days? <laughs> well, there's another reason. Discrimination. Again, they can fire you for no reason at all, employment at will. You have to prove that they discriminated. Now, how do you prove that? Well, there's all kinds of ways you can prove it. Smoking gun emails, evidence, testimony, where they can say, for example, I'm just saying, what if a manager you've got on videotape, audio tape, or an email says, get that gay guy out of here. I don't want any gays working for me. Well, that's pretty good evidence, isn't it? Harassment. Folks, you can be harassed by your manager or your boss all day long. They can bitch at you, complain about you. They can cajole you. They can, they can harass you. People say, I'm getting harassed at work. You're allowed to be harassed at work. Harassment only comes into play in employment when it involves sex. Harassment involving sex is protected. You might have a claim. Now, these are the two sexual harassment claims that you could possibly have. One is quid pro quo. If you have a boss or a manager who is stupid enough to say something like this, if you have sex with me, I'll give you a raise. If you have sex with me, I won't fire you. That's called quid pro quo. Everybody knows what quid pro quo is because of quid pro quo Joe Biden. Quid pro quo means for consideration of. That's what it is. The other sexual harassment is sexual environment. It's an environment that is full of sex. It bothers some, an employee. You could have maybe a claim there too. Under these circumstances, you need to know this. 
You have to give the employer an opportunity to cure it. For example, if you work in a cubicle and everybody's around you telling dirty, vulgar jokes, and you never tell your manager so he can correct it, that's going to kill your claim. You got to give the manager an opportunity to cure it. These are federally protected rights if you fall into them, whether it's a sexual harassment or the discrimination because of gender, age, race, so forth and so on. There is something called the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. You can file a complaint with them and they can investigate it and they can help you get it resolved. Usually to file a federal claim, you have to go through the EEOC first to file a lawsuit. By the way, a little fun fact, do you know who once ran the EEOC? Clarence Thomas, the current Supreme Court Justice. A lot of contracts have this in them, but a lot of times you have what's called mediation and arbitration of an employment agreement. Most employment contracts have that in there. So when you have an employment dispute, a lot of times it's going to be arbitrated and mediated. If that doesn't work or you have the right, you then get to the point to where you can file a lawsuit. There are also a lot of employment class actions, things dealing with somebody's path. I forgot that. Sometimes it involves a pay dispute. It's not just conduct. You know, they're chiseling you on pay or something. Right now, for example, there's class actions lawsuit flying around the tri-state involving pizzerias for how they're treating the tips to their drivers. So a lot of these employment actions can become class actions. We've had national race and gender class actions against major corporations. By the way, if you think you have a serious employment adverse action that would be covered on this short seminar, give Dieter's Law a call. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Have a great day.